It's travel season. You're maybe planning a trip for the family, but how do you keep everyone healthy? There's nothing worse than getting back from a vacation, a trip, a conference, and then getting hit with sickness across the whole family. So how do we keep our family healthy when we're traveling two, three, sometimes four times a month? I feel like in our relationship, we've always traveled quite a bit, even Mm -hmm. in our business before. This business that we're in now, we did travel quite a bit for that as well. But kids adds a whole nother thing into the mix. And so I feel like for a lot of years, we would go to things, go to conferences, and then I would come home and crash. Like, because I'd go hard, I'd stay up, I'd be networking, doing all the things and not taking care of myself. And I come home and totally get sick. So not only would I have the time off for the travel, but then the time off recovering afterwards, it was just not good. Something had to change. And I just give Chelsea a ton of credit because she's gone really deep into all of these health arenas and really helped me level up. So I feel like I'm in a place now where like my travel is actually fairly healthy. And so we're going to cover in this episode what we do before traveling, what we do uh, during like on the trip, and then what we do after to keep ourselves as healthy as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that these practices have really helped for sure. Um, of course, like there's been travel, like I can think of a time in September where we went all the way to Florida, which is a big travel day for our family and Ollie for, I think like three nights in a row at the end of the trip did not sleep well, which meant Stephen and I were not sleeping well. And our travel day back from Florida to California, it was rough. Like I remember my body like was kind of achy and it was because I wasn't getting good sleep. So of course, there's going to be things like you can prepare and prevent and do all the things. But at the end of the day, sometimes there are just unforeseen circumstances like kids or like delayed flights or, you know, you sit next to the person who's like hacking on the plane. But this this is what we do. It's kind of like our tried and true things that we moving forward, especially looking at the next year, like we are implementing these. And I think if you implement a few of them, it's going to help you out. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is before. So what do we do before a trip? Um, This is something I was terrible at, but I've seen Chelsea do it so consistently that I'm actually getting good at this now, which is like just continuing what you're already doing with supplementation. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard us talk about on this podcast using supplements, um, not to replace your nutrition, but to supplement, to add things on top of that. And not just taking supplements to take supplements because, oh, you heard turmeric's good and you should just take it because, but actually like knowing yourself, running your business, are running your body like a business and actually doing testing, looking at the data and then supplementing for the things your body actually needs. Yeah. And not too long ago, we did a podcast all about my health journey in the last year. And I really learned like I will never not do certain lab work every single year because it's been so vital for my body to really understand what my body is lacking and how to help boost it. And so I would just recommend with the supplements that Steven and I take, like I agree, don't just supplement supplement to supplement. And there are a lot of different modalities and like price points in finding out what your body is lacking in. So I would just recommend if you're not working with a functional medicine doctor, there's probably one in your town. We live in a very small town and there are a few. Now, granted, I I don't work with them. I'm working with somebody else who has a referral, but I would just like look into like, what would that cost? Do they take insurance? Do they not? So that would be like my number one recommendation. I can't um, stress this enough. It's been a game changer for our life as well as we just found out about this awesome platform. It's called choosejoy.co and joy is J-O-I and is this amazing platform that you can log in and have certain testings. You can actually choose what type of testing you want. You get paired up with someone to help you and you can go to that. It'll be in the show notes. If you are feeling like there's nobody in your area or you just want to try something else where you know the price up front of what those labs are going to cost. Yeah. And the comparative test to the one like we did was probably the comprehensive test on that website, which is where they test things like 70 plus biomarkers. And then they actually have someone who's going to coach you through those things and say, hey, you're low on this, you're, you're high on this. Mm-hmm. And for those reasons, that's why I recommend these supplements. So again, we do this, like I would say every six months because it does change. But even if you just did it once at the beginning of the year, you'd be setting yourself up for such success, just knowing exactly what your body is low on and being a supplement for those things. So that's just like kind of our whole thing on supplements. Mm-hmm. But the thing we do before travel is we make sure we pack those things because I think I would just like, oh, it's a quick trip. And I would end up forgetting them. But this is like an essential thing that's on our checklist now is like, are we just continuing on the things that we're already doing at home? And one of those things is supplementation. And so 
Chelsea's got some handy travel cases. I just use like a little Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. but we make sure that thing is handy and it's in our backpack or purse where like, even if a suitcase gets lost, like that thing is still with us at the trip. And not only just supplements, but if there is something that I use on a regular basis that I can pack up small and take with me either in my purse or my carry on, I will do that. So I take a scoop of MCT oil in my coffee every single morning along with I use this little dropper with stevia. I don't want to just use any old sugar. So those are two things that I will actually pack with me like in my purse on the carry on and I'll make that in advance. So those are things that I'm already doing that I don't want to wait until we get to the town we're in and have to order it again because I can pack it small and not have to buy this extra thing when we get there. So that's also something that I'm taking into consideration when we're traveling as well. Any travel days, we basically are going to also up our, what we call our immune protocol. And so I have a custom formulated one that like through one of, one of these tests is really formulated for me, but really it's like vitamin C. If you do one thing, mm -hmm. just getting a really high quality vitamin C that is bioavailable. We have one on our uh, influencer storefront on Amazon. It's called Sufficient C. It's like a vitamin C powder, but they also have, you know, liquids and things like that. But find a good vitamin C supplement and up your dosage on basically any days that you're traveling. Um, zinc, vitamin D, these are also all, all great ones that are like in my protocol that I'm taking. But definitely on basically any days that you're traveling, you're like upping those immune protocols just because you're just exposed, you're around more people. It's just good to do it. And, and sometimes sleep is disrupted, all those things. And so um, I pretty much up the immune protocol any days I'm traveling or any days I see a three-day decrease in HRV. Now, I know this is getting a little bit nerdy, but if you're like us, you kind of track your health with like an aura ring or like an Apple Watch or something like that. There's a thing called HRV in there. And basically it stands for heart rate variability. And it just shows like how stressed your body is. Basically, it's a great mm -hmm. daily thing that you can take a look at. I don't pay attention to sleep scores or really anything like that. I really just look at the HRV. And the HRV, if you see a decrease in that for three days straight, it's kind of a sign that like your body needs a little help, you know, mm -hmm. and you may be like more prone to getting sick. So if I see a three-day decrease in HRV or I'm traveling, um, I'm going to definitely up that immune protocol. Yeah. And then one should be standard, but drink more water, especially the day like leading up to your travel. And if you can right before the flight, like just be hydrated. Staying hydrated is really important. So we always make sure um, that we are paying attention to that. Even just bringing a water bottle is a great visual reminder. Yes, it's kind of annoying because you had to dump it out at the airport, but then you can fill it up. They all got those water bottle filling stations all over the place now. Having the water bottle just going to remind you to drink because it's in the pocket in the airplane seat in front of you, you know, and if you order water on the plane, it's just a tiny cup, having your big water bottle nice and filled up or buying water bottles, you know, uh, in the airport. It, they are expensive, but it's something that we do because if we don't do it, then we're not drinking water like all day and that can really throw you off. So we just talked about things we do leading up to the trip. Now we're going to be transitioning to what we do when we arrive at our final destination. One tip that a health coach gave me, I thought was really powerful was just to get outside three times a day. Um, a lot of times when we're traveling, it's for a conference, it's for a mastermind. We're sitting inside a lot of time, not moving. And he was just like, if you could just get outside for three times a day, just think like your meals for 15 minutes, just like go outside, see the outside. It's just going to help you acclimate and help your circadian rhythm adjust to that new time zone. Now we're typically, you know, some, a lot of our travels like within the States, we're not going crazy outside our time zone. Uh, but regardless, you want to definitely like see if you can see the sunset wherever you are. Um, if you can see the sunset, it really helps your body know, okay, it's nighttime now. It's starting mm -hmm. to get nighttime. And so that's something we're starting to implement, getting outside three times a day at minimum and watching the sunset to help our circadian rhythms reset to that time zone which will help us sleep better at night, which will help our body stay healthy. I feel like I learned this the hard way. Again, back to that September conference where Ollie didn't sleep well. That was a long conference and I sat a lot. And I remember coming home from that trip and just telling Stephen, like my body felt the the stagnation and and I think that played into me feeling more exhausted and that like those muscle pains that I had on the way home from being so tired I really said like next time like I'm gonna leave the conference even if it's for 10 15 minutes and I will either go find a treadmill at the gym and like walk on that and you know zoom in or watch the live stream or go walk outside for 10 15 minutes but 
I really wasn't allowing myself to do that. And it was kind of one of those moments like never again will I not do this because um, it really did mess up my body because I I am consistently active. I do get up and move. And for that conference, I just wasn't. And it it affected me for sure. So there's two things we do like almost immediately upon landing. And one's a little weird, I guess. And the other one's totally normal. So let's talk about the weird one first. We go and immediately try to take off our shoes and go outside and touch the ground, okay? So get our feet in the dirt, get them in the grass. This is called grounding, and it is a thing, okay? I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole right now. It works. Um, but your body car- is it like carries an electrical charge, and things can get a little charged up. When you touch the earth, just magical things happen. That's as deep as I'm going to go into it. Just try it. Like, why do you feel good when you walk barefoot on the beach? Hmm, there's probably a reason, okay? Mm-hmm. So... We do this. It's a great thing to do after being super high up in the air in a plane. Just come down, get grounded, okay? And then almost immediately, uh, usually even on the car ride over to wherever we're staying, we're doing something on our phone. And Chelsea is the boss of this thing. Yeah, so we always do some kind of grocery Instacart order. Of course, you could go to the store if there is no Instacart in your area. But we are always ordering um, good, healthy snacks that are high in protein. And no matter how much the conference supplies. I feel like most of our travel these days is for conferences, but even if we're going as a family, like we always want to have certain groceries and know what is in our food. So for instance, like we're buying like beef jerky and protein and nuts and like certain things, especially when we're with the boys that they can snack on that we know the ingredients of. Mm -hmm. I will even the last in the last year, like I've gotten really picky about dressings and condiments and, and different things like that. So I will almost always like buy like a type of dressing that I know doesn't have certain seed oils. And I will almost like carry that around in my purse. And when we go to restaurants or out to dinner, it's like, I know exactly what kind of ingredients are going in my salad. And I know that sounds a little extreme, but I've just gone on trips before where I haven't done that. And because I have been really mindful of the types of food I'm putting into my body, when I put in food that has gluten in it or has all these seedles, I can actually feel it. And one of the first things I notice in the morning is after if I have a food that that got snuck into, my face will actually get really puffy. And it's kind of like this reminder of, oh, Chelsea, you ate something with either gluten or dairy because I'm supposed to be avoiding that right now along with like other seed oils. And so it's just an extra precautionary thing that I do, but it makes me like really aware of, again, what we're putting in our body really does matter. And I don't want to get thrown off just by a couple of days from our trip. We love to stay in places that have kitchens for this reason, because it's nice to just be able to prepare some of your own food um, and not just be eating out all the time. And we just like to have the place stocked with like really healthy snacks. So it's definitely good to know the area. Um, certain areas, like if you're in a big city, that's going to have healthy options. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes like we found when we've been traveling, like in the deep South, you know, if you ask for a lettuce wrap burger or something like that, like like people are like, who are you, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, you just kind of learn and you adapt. So if you know, you're going to a place that has a little bit less healthy options, maybe you're packing more of those things. Uh, in advance. Yeah. And another thing that we do that we didn't used to is we actually will order like water bottles as well to the hotel, even to the Airbnb. One, it's nice if you're out and about, especially with the boys, just to grab one and go. But two, like we've also become picky about our water because that matters as well. So we try and get mineral water. And I think more so for conferences than anything else. Like I like knowing I have a ton of water that I can fill up my water bottle that I'm good to go and not having to search for like a water fountain and when we've traveled to different states sometimes the water just doesn't taste good like that might be a weird concept to yeah. some and it used to not bother me but like certain water tastes weird and i just i want to be able to enjoy drinking water if it tastes weird i'm not going to want to drink it so we always stock up on water bottles just to have for us and yeah. for the boys and if you're staying in a hotel i mean like they have like maybe one water bottle or two water bottles in the room sometimes they're free sometimes they're like eight dollars yeah um and you definitely don't want to drink out of those cups that they have in the bathroom like definitely don't drink out of those cups as well as the hotel ice it's really sketchy so i just like we just play it safe and it's like hey i know there's an additional investment Mm -hmm. or investing in our health uh to have water we know where it's coming from Mm -hmm. yeah and i think like why we're so passionate about this is because 
we like our time is valuable and often we're traveling without the boys especially to conferences and i don't want to just go to a conference get sick not feel well then i have to come home and our business still has to run i still have to be a mom regardless of how i feel and so i want to come back healthy and recharge as much as i possibly can and so putting in these little things that we do like buying water like having our supplements that all adds up and helps us when we come back Back home to go right back into what we were doing. Hey, Rainmaker, looking for a way to supercharge your self care routine? Look no further than our friends at Higher Dose. If you're looking for tools to help you feel rejuvenated, refreshed, and absolutely glowing, you have to check this brand out. I was new to even what a PEMF mat was, and I was super sick one day. I had body aches and a headache, and I laid down on our new PEMF mat. And right afterwards, I fell asleep and I had the most deep, rejuvenating sleep I've ever experienced. And when I woke up from my nap, my headache and body aches were gone. And I was so amazed by the power of my PEMF. And don't even get us started on their red light therapy products and infrared sauna. They're perfect. And if you're ready to elevate your health in beauty rituals with higher doses, nature-inspired wellness tools, Head on over to RainmakerFamily.com slash deals to get the hookup. That's RainmakerFamily.com slash deals. Now I'll share something with you guys. Like, I don't want you to feel like we're like, man, the perfect eaters on these vacations, because this is definitely something I'm working on. I feel like when I was young, when my family traveled, it was like a really special thing. And Mm -hmm. so like, we would like treat ourselves and like car ride snacks and all these things because it was such a more rare occurrence. Now... We are traveling as a a, our common occurrence, you know? And so I've had to kind of get out of that mindset. Like, oh, I'm traveling. It's just like, I'm traveling. Have a donut, like all the things. And so I'm just growing in there and just being honest with you guys that I sometimes still fall into that. Where it's like, oh, traveling, like just eat whatever. But it's like, now that's like part of my life. So I'm like having to come to terms with like, all right, I just need to eat like I normally do all the time while I'm traveling as well. And so that being said, though, sometimes you're in really cool places Mm -hmm. and you want to have an awesome culinary experience. You want to splurge. So we've definitely found splurge early. Yeah, if you're going to splurge, I would say like splurge. And this is not like backed by any science or anything like that. This is just Chelsea's recommendation. So take it with a grain of salt. But if you're going to splurge on like a donut or ice cream, I would say do it earlier in the day, like like closer to early dinner time rather than later in the evening, because what you eat right before bed does affect your sleep and sleep we know affects so many things. And so if you're going to splurge, which Stephen and I do again, like when we're on vacation, of course, we're going to get ice cream. Of course, we're going to do fun things. Conferences. I mean, sometimes conferences have healthy things. Sometimes they don't. And we want to enjoy ourselves. This isn't about like rules and regulations, just helping you optimize. And so when and if you do splurge on a specific trip, I would do it earlier because like I said, it affects your sleep and the more you can digest it and figure out how it affects your body, the better. So do it earlier in the day. Yeah. And it, when you eat uh, in relation to when you sleep really matters. And it's really tempting to eat late at night. Uh, but we try to have a food cutoff, basically, at least three to four hours before going to bed. And so, you know, here, uh, when we're on this time zone, that's gonna be like 8 p.m. Right? One thing our uh, health coach recently shared with us, I was like, Oh, that's a that sounds like a really good idea <laughs> is just eat on the same time windows. Like, mm. so if it's not a crazy time change, of course, if you're going international, you're not going to wake up in the middle of the night to eat. But <laughs> if you're just changing a couple hours time zone, try to eat around the same times. Uh, this will keep you in that same kind of rhythm that your body's used to and not throw things off. And so if you're just like, I'm going to Arizona, I think this, this week, and it's just one hour difference. That's really easy. To just go, Hey, I'm just going to eat in the same time windows, I'm going to do the same food cutoff time as well at night. Yeah. And we, I think the last travel that we did together, um, was the same time zone, but they made dinner reservations for seven 30 at night, which is like, that should be my cutoff time. And of course we want to go, there's good food. So we did enjoy it, but I, I don't think dinner was served until like 8 30 or nine o'clock at night yeah. and they also around 8 30 like offered to have a glass of wine and i was like sure i'll enjoy some wine with my dinner i didn't even have a full i, I didn't even have a half glass of wine like i had such a small amount of wine but because it was so late in the day and i don't drink a lot like 
I went back that night and I was wired for like yeah. two or three hours. Like it took probably two or three hours and I did not check the time. I don't like doing that when I sleep because it just like messes with, oh no, you're, you're losing sleep and all these things. But I learned a lesson of like, okay, so some of these masterminds, they're going to give us dinner late at night. There's nothing we can do about it. Of course, I'm going to like enjoy the food, be with our friends, but maybe next time instead, I will just not have wine at all. Like I will or just have one or two sips because clearly my body where it's at right now cannot handle even having like the tiniest amount of wine that late in the night. And so that was a learning moment for me. And it was kind of one of those like, well, this is really unfortunate that I didn't get as much sleep, but now I know. And now I know I'm not going to have wine that late, even the smallest amount, because it's just not worth it. It is not worth not sleeping to me anymore. Maybe a few years ago when we didn't have kids, it would have been like, whatever, you know, enjoy, have four glasses of wine. Like, I don't know, but it's just not worth it anymore. So I'm not doing it. The last thing we do during our trips is we really try to optimize sleep as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're traveling, your Airbnbs, your hotels, you know, it's hard to have consistency unless you choose like, hey, I only stay at this type of hotel, like Marriott, Hilton, right? Like they all use the same like beds, right? Um, like the, the chains use the same beds within the chain. You know what I mean? So if you find a bed you really like, maybe you do stick to that chain of hotels because you just know consistently it's going to be good, like the bed. But beyond that, we do things to really try to protect the sleep. We, we want to make sure there's blackout curtains or something like that to really get the room dark. Or if not, have like a sleep mask. I just got one from, um, what's it called? Manta sleep mask. And I really like it. Like they, they're called like these like no pressure, no eye pressure masks. And so you can kind of like open your eyes underneath the mask and there's not any pressure on your eyes. Uh, so I have one of those. Uh, those are really nice. Having earplugs or some sort of like noise dampener or even a sound machine, mm -hmm. right? These things are really helpful because like in a new environment, you never know, Airbnb, something like that. People are being loud outside. There's a car honking outside, just a new environment. And then the third thing we do is uh, we bring our boys uh, on a lot of these trips. Uh, we want to make sure they have a separate sleeping space. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had travel where we're all in the same room together. And it's just there's so many more variables going around uh, when that's happening. That like Kaizen wakes up and he wakes up Ollie and Ollie's waking up. And he's waking up me. You know what <laughs> I mean? So we like to have at least a suite where there's like a door and like they're in another room sleeping. They can go wake up each other, mm -hmm. but like, we got to protect us. Cause like in the morning, they're going to be awake regardless if we slept or not. And we want to make sure we're like in the most energetic state we can be. Yeah. And another thing that I do regularly at home that you can get travel ones is red light therapy. I love my higher dose red light face mask. I bring it with me everywhere I go. And there's, if you want to look in the show notes, you can see the one I exactly use, but I bring that with me as well. That helps with inflammation. Red light therapy is so good for you. That's something that I make sure to bring along. And I do just like I would at home. All right. So it's time to go home. We're going to transition to stuff we do when we get home. I mean, a lot of it's pre-planning and during the trip. I think the one other thing to mention is we are very particular on the times of flights and the mm -hmm. style of flights we do. Um, we try to look for nonstop flights when if all, at all possible. Um, we'll pay more for a nonstop as opposed to having a connecting flight, especially when you're traveling with kids. And then we just have certain times we don't fly. You know, like we used to do these like 3 a.m. wake ups and 6 a.m. And it's just like just to get the deal. It's like if I'm going to pay 20 extra dollars to fly at a like humane hour, like I'm going to do that because like I like I have I've had two trips this year that I've had to do that where it's like real intense wake up times or like a overnight to New York. And like as sometimes like that's all you can do. But we do everything we can to avoid that. We actually have it just written out like here's our travel rules that we try to stay within. Um, so we know that we're protecting our time. And like we also will time stuff around naps for the boys. So we're not disrupting their sleep schedules as much as we can. And now we get home. One of the things we've really tried to implement inside of those boundaries and, and when we travel is if we can, we try and be home on a Saturday. Like if we're gone during the week, we try and be home on a Saturday so that Sunday can feel like a rest day before we start the week. And again, this doesn't always work out this way. Sometimes we'll stay later, get home late. But we've just found that like having that day of almost like catch up before you start the work week is really important to us. Of course, when we get home, we're going to continue our immune protocol for just like a day or two after the travel. Um, just those upped vitamin C levels, things like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. 
that's how we stay healthy while traveling. Again, we're not perfect at this. No. We're definitely growing. And <laughs> yes. we'd love to hear your tips, honestly. Chelsea loves geeking out on this stuff, and mm-hmm. then she'll tell me about it. So why, if you have a travel tip that's like, oh, this is a game changer for like staying healthy while traveling, hit Chelsea up on Instagram, okay? She has a personal Instagram. It's at Chels, C-H-E-L-S underscore D-S-D-I-A-Z on Instagram, like health tip for traveling. Um, and she'll pass those to me. Like we love to collect these because it's awesome not getting sick when you get mm-hmm. home. Yeah. And it's awesome not derailing your entire week, you know, uh, whether you're traveling or when you're getting home because you didn't take care of your body. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Um, it's been fun to create these over the years. I really feel like we started honing in on more when we had Kaizen because we had to. Like your health is your most important thing. I love that saying health is wealth, you know, and it really is true. Like how can you take care of yourself and your body so that you can function at the highest level? So thanks for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom, you can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A dot com slash podcast. 